It's been so life-giving to have Apostle Bernard with us in, in our house. of Ghana is called the Gateway of Africa. Um, I feel like having him in Zion is the gateway to Africa <laughs> and bringing Africa into Zion and bringing the nations um, into Zion and into this house. And it's been a while since we've had um, any missionary <laughs> from the nations come and speak and share and be a part of us and I feel like you Apostle Bernard are just the gateway <laughs> to bringing the nations open in Zion again and, um, just as you Ghana is the nation the gateway to Africa that you will also be the gateway to the nations and to Africa in this house so we just honor you for being here and we welcome you so if you would just open your hearts Isabel Francis, get down. Sorry, excuse me. Go sit, please. <laughs> so, Apostle, will you come up and you guys just want to welcome Apostle? Can I, can I pray for you? <laughs> you guys just reach out your hands. We want to pull on the anointing tonight. Father, we just release everything that you have inside of Apostle Bernard tonight, and we receive it with wide open hearts, ready with ready ears, Father, of our hearts to pull on everything that you have for us tonight. I pray open heaven over Apostle Bernard this evening, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. Mama Nicole, thank you. God bless you tonight. I salute the apostle in the house. Apostle, God bless you for availing your pulpit for me to stand and speak the word of God. Pastor, who invited me to his class today and gave me the chance to share. God bless you and your students. My prayer is we want to see those students in a flame of fire after they graduate and the regions of America will hear about these people. We took only 120 people at the day of Pentecost to turn the world upside down. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. I must decrease that you can continue to increase. I don't know how to speak, but they give me the tank and the power of the Holy Spirit to minister tonight. Thank you for this commission. I thank you for the apostle and his leaders, people who are concerned about this commission. Let them be the light of this community and the region of Washington and the Envaros. Let your glory be seen. Thank you for the oil in the house. In Jesus' name, my prayer of thanksgiving. Amen. Well, we thank God for tonight. And I think this is my last time in this auditorium. By Monday, I say goodbye to Washington. The next following Monday, which is 30th, by this time I'm in the air telling the pilot to run so that I'll reach Africa quick. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm feeling home. Well, I came to receive a lot that I can go and give to my people. I have a word to share tonight. If you are informed, then you can be transformed. If you don't discover, you cannot recover. Amen. If you have your Bible, turn with me 
to the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 10. And let's hear the word of God. And this continue by the space of two years so that all the which dwelt in Asia had the word of the Lord Jesus both Jews and Greeks 11 and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Ben Bernard today Paul is not there are you getting me be serious today Paul is not here so your name must be there because this book of apostles or the book of Acts ha has not end it has only 28 chapters and you are writing your life today in ministry is writing chapter 29 and you are writing chapter 30 so we continue to write the acts of apostles until jesus come back are you with me so that and god wrote special miracles by the hand of Paul. Okay. Twelve. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the disciples departed from them and the evil spirit went out of them. It means that specific time, that generation, God used Paul to the extent that even his handkerchief for healing people. And the same spirit is still around. It is only we did not avail ourselves. Let me finish before I give you my topic. 13. Then certain of the vagabond Jews exorcites took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits. The name of the Lord Jesus saying, we command you or we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. My topic or my theme tonight of exhortation, I'm here to exhort. Who are you in Christ? Your identity. What is your identity in Christ? In Africa, our fathers, our grandfather brag upon the type of juju or voodoo they have. That is their power. I mean, they brag. You, you don't know me. If you were to know me, the thing I would do to you, you will not talk to me that way. That is what they were bragging about in darkness. Are you with me tonight? You and I, we are now in Christ. Coming out from darkness to a big light, unquenchable light. What are you bragging about? Are you bragging about the Holy Spirit in you? Or you are bragging about how you can gossip about somebody? What is your identity? When you are going, to, you reach to the airport, you are a citizen of America, right? Perfect. 
But before you fly, I mean, seven years ago, I came, I, I flew to Florida. But they didn't check even my passport. That's why I'm a foreigner. I got to show my boarding pass. But now, and we, that time, even American citizens travel to any other state, no, they don't check your passport. But now you have to produce your passport. Because things are going on abnormal. Our identity is very, 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 very essential and very important. I'm a Ghanaian. I cannot just walk to the airport and fly to any other country. I have to produce my identity at the airport. My brother, my sister, my father, my mother. What is your identity in Jesus Christ? It's a question. And you have to answer it to yourself. If every identity is very, very important, then we have identities to show at the gate of heaven. And the passport is the blood of Jesus that has washed and redeemed us. Blessed are the people who wash their roots in the blood. Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Say by grace. Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Are you in the number? Say by the blood. I am in the number. I am in the number. I am in the number. Save by the blood. Are you in the number that are saved by the blood? Or you are just going to church? Identity is very important. What is your identity? Christ. 14. And there were seven sons of one skiver, a Jew and a chief of the priests, which do so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But excuse me, who are you? Your identity. These seven boys are devout young gentlemen whom their father is an elder in the synagogue. Excuse me to say, listen to me. If they born you, you are pregnant by mistake, mama want to go to hospital, she didn't reach, and she born you at the garage, it doesn't mean you are a car. You are a human being. Burning you at garage does not mean you are a car. You are a human being. So these young people, despite their father, is an elder in the synagogue among the Pharisees. They are not born again. They don't know that God their father is saying. So people brag. It is my grandfather who gave the land when the missionaries came. Yeah, it's good. Your grandfather gave the land. And my grandmother was the first person to be baptized by the bishop. It's fine. But that doesn't make you who are talking that you, are you a Christian? Are you also born? What is your identity? This is this bo seven boys saw the miracle. That's what coming out post where that was preaching and miracles were happening. And so after this sin, they, they thought that insane man around the street was, who was possessed with several demons is an experiment that they want to try something. But it, it was never well with them that day. 
Praise the Lord. Please, if your relationship with Christ in this room is far, you can reconnect tonight. You can reconnect with Christ tonight. The spirit of Christ is around. Amen. Seven of them went. I said, come on, we command you to come out from this man. In the name of Jesus Christ, that Paul preached. If you know their father. So, the demons heard about a name that shake that foundation. They have to leave. Because they have mentioned the name. But before I come out, excuse me, I want to know your identity. Are you European or are you are American? Can I see your passport? Where are you going? I mean, where, where are you coming from? Where are you going? Does the immigration permit you to leave the country or you are coming? Excuse me. I want to know identity. Paul, I know. He was with me. The devil. But the day came. He was redeemed. Jesus, I know he's the son of God. But who are you? Speak. That is the story today many of us if the devil will question us today we have nothing to tell and my bible tells me the demon jumped from the man who was naked on the street into those seven boys and all of them came with clothing they went home naked that is your relationship with christ Paul said, I'm not ashamed of this gospel. The Muslim man goes around, especially on Fridays, and carry the tasbir, a big one, wrong one. Then they put it in their neck to prove that he's a Muslim. What about you? People go to church and hide the Bible. People, one month, they never read the Bible. It's good to work to pay our bills. But we cherish our jobs more than the word of God. Why can't you spend only 30 minutes to read your word? It will improve. That problem you are thinking about, apostle can help when he's around. He can help to pray with you. But the rest is with us. The rest is with us. Apostle is not in my heart. But I told him that is what he will hear and help to pray. Even some of our problems, we are even ashamed to tell our pastors. Tonight, the devil is asking a question. Paul, I know. Today, Apostle John, I know. Jesus, I know. What about you? Who are you? Anytime, this is what we do in Africa. If I'm a young pastor, and pastor send me to go and bury somebody, or go and conduct a funeral, anything, when I go and they give me the pulpit at that public, I announce and declare the name of Jesus. After I say, I am standing here in the name of Apostle John, who is oversharing my soul, is my overseer. He has sent me. So I'm performing all this right on behalf of Apostle John. So when the devil comes, he has nothing to ask me because. I have declared because somebody I'm under an umbrella. I, no, are you getting? It's good to respect authority. I come, I come to conduct the funeral. You can bury, finish, and die the following day. Yeah. Who sent you? Whose umbrella are you under? Paul, 
Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? I'm ending my message. When you read Job chapter 1, verse 6 going, the Bible says, when the children of God gathered, it's the devil was also passing by. He came among the children of God. And God asked him a question. Where are you coming from? So, well, I'm going to and fro. Even I have no permanent address. You have no permanent answer. You are going to and fro. How can you follow such a person? Even my telephone number, out of coverage area, because I'm going to and fro. Have you seen my son, Apostle John, in Spokane, in Zion Christian Center? He said, yes, yes, I've seen him. But listen, the devil says something. He compared to speak one to it. Had he not you, God, who has anointed him and protected him? This is what the scripture says. I, I, saw, I saw him. But he is under a pool of blood. Covered. So he's untouchable. Excuse me, can the devil testify about your relationship with Jesus? Had he, had it not been that you have blessed him and protected him? This part is answered to God. So even if the devil knows that you are protected, you are covered, then what is your problem? My sister, what is your problem? My brother, what is your problem? The devil who is our principal enemy, know that you are protected and covered by the blood of Jesus. What is your problem? I mean, when I discover that secret, I don't, I, I don't fear him at all. Because he is a toothless lion. He has no teeth. He bragged like a lion, but he has no teeth. I have a lion. He's a conquering lion of tribe of Judah. The root of David has conquered. The lion of tribe of Judah. You know the reason why the lion could not touch Daniel in the lion's den that day? When lion, uh, uh, Daniel was thrown into the den, Heaven has called the lion to begin to fast. They declare 24 hours fasting. Because their master, from the loin of lion of tribe of Judah, the real lion has come. So they have to salute him. If a sergeant in the army meets a general, you have to salute. Oh, praise the Lord. We have the Holy Ghost in us. That is why when Jesus sent the people two by two, they came and said, yes, sir, boss, the thing you gave us is too good. Even the devil, they salute us in your name. Sister, we have something that we don't know, we don't cherish. We have power that even when you speak, is that because you didn't speak? That one, that, that drug man is not safe. When you speak, you come to Jesus. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. But who are you? The king Darius and his elders thought that is the end. But thank God. They said the king did not sleep until they... There was declaration of fasting in the lion's den, and there was full uh, vigil for the king in his house. He could not sleep until daybreak. Bible said he didn't eat, he denied the wife and everything until daybreak. Because Daniel, a man of God, filled with the spirit of God, is in the lion's den. So the king will not sleep, and the lions also will not sleep. They have to salute. May the Holy Spirit that is in you.
when the enemy see you, may they salute you because of the oil. Praise the Lord. Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? You are, you are untouchable. You are undiable. Unkillable. No, 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 no. Bible says you live to fulfill your days. And you go to the fight your fathers in peace and in good old age. Period. That's the word of God. You can negotiate it. You can subtract it. You can add to it. That's the word of God. What is your relationship with Jesus? Are you a lazy Christian? Anytime you take the Bible to read, then it becomes a sleeping tablet. Anytime you kneel to pray, then you are sleeping. I know my sheep. They hear my voice. No other voice. They hear. And thank God he said, no one can smash them on my hand. Because the, the Father who has given them to me is over all boss. May God bless you tonight. We are coming to pray. Please can we be on your feet? Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. My question to you tonight. When it comes to crisis, can the devil testify about you? He compared to say that. Paul, I know. Jesus is the son of the living God. He died. He rose. He ascended. 500 people saw him when the cloud received him. He seated at the right hand of the Father. And still, the Bible says, interceding for us. What is your problem? Why can't you leave this problem on the altar? You don't just take a, a, a crazy man on the street and think he's an experiment. Paul was having a different spirit to command those demons to live. Draw me nearer, nearer to thee. My sons every day. Lord, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer, nearer to you. Oh, my songs every day. Lord, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer, nearer to thee. Oh, tonight, my song tonight. Oh, Lord, draw me nearer. Oh, draw me nearer, nearer to thee. Can we raise our hand with humility and begin to speak to heaven? Holy Spirit, I thank you tonight. Open your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord and thank God for the Holy Spirit tonight. Thank God for the Holy Spirit for this message, the word of assertion tonight. Your identity in Christ. What I'm speaking, you know yourself. Whether your relationship is very poor, whether it's rich with him, you know yourself. You begin to thank heaven tonight. Say, Papa, thank you tonight for this word has come to me. It's my word. Lord, if I, I am not closer to you, I'm not closer to you, draw me nearer to you than ever before. Even the prodigal son realized that the relationship was poor. He ran back home. And he, the father opened his arm to receive him. You are before the throne tonight. Ah, tell heaven to intercede on your behalf. Let the Holy Spirit empower you. That your relationship, your prayer life that was so excited, so sweet smelling like a, 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 every uh, outdoor, sweet smelling before, it is now no. Let the Holy Spirit minister to your heart to me. Say, Lord, draw me nearer to you. Lord, draw me nearer to you. Holy Spirit, draw me nearer. So long as I am among the living, Lord, draw me closer to you than ever before. In Romans 12, he said, our salvation is nearer than ever we believe. Wake up from your sleep. 
Lord, help us to wake up from our sleep tonight. All the unforgiving spirits, I minister this afternoon, about unforgiving spirit, hatred, pride in our lives has ridiculed our Christian life. It has ridiculed our spiritual life so that we are, we are just going to church. We, 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 we are not complete with him. But you can be complete tonight by inviting the Holy Spirit to reconnect you. Paul, I know. Joseph, I know. Who are you? Your name is there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name tonight. Father, we thank you tonight. Spirit of God, we thank you tonight. It's not about us. It's about your kingdom business. You are our king. We are your subjects. We are blood and flesh. Where we have come in short, restore us tonight. Thank you for the spirit of restoration. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> thank you, Lord. We cannot do it without you, the Holy Spirit. We thank you. You have been sent to our generation to help and comfort us. Let your name be glorified. Thank you for tonight. Thank you for every soul that is present here. I pray that Lord reconnect them. Reconnect them as the prodigal son came home. You, go, you, you, you went and meet him on the road. And you make a great feast to him. Thank you, Papa. Holy Spirit, have your own way in our life tonight. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's so good. Thank you so much, Pastor Bernard. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, we'll be dismissed. If you'd like to have prayer, though, you can welcome to come on up and we'll get somebody here to gather around. But just a great message, just to our identity in Christ and who we are in Him. And just to really take the challenge. <laughs> about you know our identity and who we are in him and so that's really a great great word so god bless you might be dismissed mm -hmm.